Well, kefir is a culture, a probiotic culture, and it's a probiotic culture that people have been using for since the dawn of time. Um, every ancient text, every Bible has the, you know, the kefir in it. <laughs> um, our ancient uh, Caucasian ancestors have some of the most amazing stories of carrying kefir around in gold lined coffins. So it's been really incredibly important to our health and wellness since we've become people. And it's been important then and it's important now. I'd have to say that kefir culture is probably one of the most complex probiotic cultures on earth. It has 30 to 60 different individual probiotics inside of it. And these are the probiotics that work together. And this is the most important piece of this is that microbes all over the planet work for themselves and some of them are working together. But kefir is the ones that come together to make life possible. They really, these microorganisms are so powerful and so prevalent and so ubiquitous across the planet Earth that almost every high mountain spring you go to on Earth that's above 5,000 feet is going to have kefir in it. And so since the dawn of time, people have been interacting with the springs. Of course, in the beginning, the springs were the place of worship, the places of power, the places of of exchange of ideas. And so you would go up to the springs and on the way up there with your animals, you would be picking the berries and the fruits and the, the bounty of the, of the ecosystem as you went up to the spring head. And when you got up to the spring head, there'd usually be a church or a temple of some kind or something to give worship. And they would give worship to the spring. They would give their praises to the god or goddess right then and there physically to the spring and give offerings of their fruits to the spring. And those offerings, would be sitting there while they went back home and they would come back the next lunar cycle and give thanks again and let their animals drink of the spring and eat of the food and pick and when you got there to the spring well you'd see the, what you had left before with stuff growing off of it these little crystals would be growing off the edge of it and of course when you gave an offering to god or goddess and god or goddess gave you something back that was going to make your family healthy and, and wealthy and wise then that is the ultimate return from nature. And I think that we can all basically feel that. <laughs> so kefir is one of the most magical um, cultures we have. There's kombucha, there's kefir, there's um, lacto, there's all kinds of these wonderful um, probiotics that we have. But kefir is probably one of the most, the oldest and longest used because of its ability to be transferred from human to human you can grow kefir and it gets bigger and bigger each time you grow it. You keep feeding it, it gets bigger like any animal. And it gets bigger and it, and it, and it grows and it makes its own babies. And it just like, uh, like any big, it just gets bigger and bigger. And then you share it with your family and your friends and they make it and their family and friends and they share it. And it's been shared since the dawn of time that way. And the people who've shared it are the people who become healthy. And the people who've shared it with each other as a culture are still here. They've made it through the, the scourges. They've made it through the famines. They've made it through the things. They've had these special tools that they could use to digest and eat anything in their environment. And to me, kefir is one of the most amazing ones where it transforms elements and flavors and things, and it doesn't destroy them. It makes them better. So to me, kefir is the ultimate probiotic culture.